What's up everyone, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about five tips that I have for Illustrator if you're a beginner. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online community for creatives just like you who are looking to take the next step in their creative journey. That next step for you is probably getting into graphic design if you're here on this video. There's a great class over there I took recently called Graphic Design Basics. Now in this class they talk about symmetry versus asymmetry, framing elements on your page, using a grid design layout, and also hierarchy. Hierarchy is my absolute favorite lesson from this, talking about how to point the viewer's eye at different spots in your design, creating a hierarchy, which is like a relationship between elements through color, through size, through shape, thinness, boldness, white space. Those are some of the biggest principles to learn in graphic design, and you'll learn it by taking that class. Now the first thousand members that click the link in the description or the top comment on this video can take that class for free by getting Skillshare Premium for two free months. It's only $10 per month with an annual subscription after that. So what are you guys waiting for? Skillshare has thousands of classes all about design or even other lifestyle classes like cooking, woodworking, Anything like that that you're interested in, Skillshare has plenty of classes for you. Let's dive into this one, which will be five tips about Illustrator for beginners. Tip number one is scale strokes, effects, and corners. Now, depending on which version of Illustrator you're in, these options are gonna be in different spots. But a lot of time you'll find them in the transform panel or in the newest version of Illustrator, they're sitting over there in the properties panel when you don't have anything selected. So toggle these options depending on what you want to keep the same within your artwork. Scale strokes means the stroke is going to scale up as your artwork scales up. If you don't have it checked, then the stroke is gonna stay the exact same, but your object is going to get bigger. So you'll find yourself wanting one or the other option. Probably most of you will want to scale strokes and effects but sometimes you wanna keep that point size the same on that stroke or the corners the exact same as well. Number two is a little bit more complicated, but this is a huge one for beginners and that's using global swatches. When you create colors in your document, in your swatch panel, you can create a new swatch and you can turn on global swatch. This is gonna put a little, a little triangle in the corner of that swatch in your swatches panel and it's going to allow you to change that color later on. So any object in your document that uses that global swatch is gonna be something that you can just simply change that one color and it's gonna change all the artwork on your artboards. This is a super powerful tool. However, if you didn't already know this and you already have something created, there's a really nifty feature called recolor artwork. When you go use this, you can look at all the colors that are in your document and you can say, hey, take that color and make it this color. It's almost like having global swatches, a little bit more manual of a process, but if you don't have global swatches set up in your document and you wanna change all the colors of certain objects and they're way too hard to click individually, you can go into recolor artwork and pick and choose which colors to change. Now, speaking of artboards, in Illustrator, you can actually use multiple artboards and these artboards can be all the same size. So if you had different versions of a logo, on your workspace, you could have all of these segmented out into different artboards. Or let's say for me, for instance, I used to create a lot of web banners in Illustrator because I like to work with vector graphics. These web banners would come in all different sizes. I didn't wanna have a bunch of new documents for all the different sizes, so I would create artboards for each size. And the really nifty feature of this is that you can then export those artboards all at once. Number four is aligning to key object, and really it would be aligning in general. There's the alignment panel. You can go up to the window drop down and find it. This panel allows you to align to your artboard, allows you to align to a selection, but the one that's grayed out normally is align to key object. This allows you to align objects to each other. So let's say you're trying to center up two pieces of text that are separate text boxes. As long as you have both objects selected and then that secondary key object selected sort of twice, you can then align all any other objects to that one key object. 
This is a really useful feature just to be aligning objects to each other, not necessarily taking a whole selection and moving it. The key object doesn't move, but everything else will move relative to the alignment option that you clicked for that key object. Now this last one might sound really simple, but it is really powerful and that's grouping objects. When you group objects together, let's say you're creating a face, for instance, in our last tutorial, we created like a bunny rabbit and he had a face and he had all the features of his face. We could group his entire head together and then only sort of isolate and edit that head and move it around without having to click on all of the individual elements. That's one big feature. The other big thing is that you can double click into that group and everything else on your document will gray out except for the objects in that group. So you can easily make some edits to that and then double click outside of it to go back to your main level. In the upper left hand corner of your screen, you're gonna see when you're isolated inside of those groups and that kind of lets you know, it's kind of like a navigation of where you're at in your document. And you can click on that to go back or you can just double click outside of your group. These groups also show up in your layers panel. And we haven't talked about layers panel in Illustrator much on this channel. You can call this 5B if you want. Layers are really useful and helpful to organize everything on your artboard in Illustrator. There are times where it's useful and there are times where I ignore it and just build everything on one layer. But I would recommend being organized using layers as well. Works kind of like Photoshop, except your canvas is always selectable so you can just click on objects on your artboards and canvas all the time within your workspace but the layers will help you turn on and off objects keep things grouped together and just really keep your documents organized especially if you're working with other designers as well i can't create this video without talking about the shape builder tool it's the most powerful tool in illustrator and if i'm going to make a five tips for beginners i have to include this one i gave you five or six ish other ones shape builder tool best tool ever if you haven't heard of it yet it's over in your tool panel it's like a little cursor with two circles Basically, when you have objects, you can select both objects where they overlap, and you can use the Shape Builder tool to slice off portions, to hold Option or Alt, and get rid of sections. It works kind of like the Pathfinder option, except for it really allows you to literally select what you'd want and don't want. I know we all kind of go to the Pathfinder options and just guess and click on Merge and Unite and Divide and all those different options until it does what we want. The Shape Builder tool, really allows you to morph objects, combine them together, divide them apart, and really have control over your vector elements. So please, if you haven't heard of Shape Builder tool, look into it. It's one of the best tools in Illustrator. That's it for this video, you guys. I think I gave you more than five, six, seven, not really sure. But if you are a beginner in Illustrator, go look at some of those classes on Skillshare. Remember the first thousand that click the link in the description or the top comment can get Skillshare premium for two months free. And if you're just learning graphic design, that graphic design basics class, and there are other graphic design classes are really great to get you started with some of the graphic design principles that you need to know. I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.